Hi guys. Hey everyone. Hope you all are having a good April so far. We are currently trying to figure out if it's spring or winter here. It was like 60 degrees this weekend and then today it snowed. So hopefully wherever you are, it's looking better than that. But uh, we just wanted to send out an update and tell you all what's kind of been happening in Fort Collins this past month. We've had a lot of really amazing things going on that we want to share with you. So the first thing, um, I think last time we shared with you about a freshman named Peyton. And so I've been reading the Bible weekly with Peyton and Kristen, and they have been coming around um, and getting kind of connected to our community so far. Um, they started coming to Sunday Gathering a couple of weekends ago. Um, but Peyton, recently at our last uh, Bible study on Tuesday, decided to follow Jesus. And so uh, we are celebrating that. Um, we have been reading through John, and we were reading the story of the Samaritan woman and about how uh, Jesus called her out. Um, and immediately she went and told everyone about mm -hmm. um, who Jesus is. And uh, something that actually stood out to Peyton was that uh, the Samaritan woman would have been a person kind of pushed out from the outskirts of culture. And so the fact that they listened to her and actually believed her when she talked about Jesus healing her um, or talked about Jesus seeing her for who she is, uh, that, that was actually really significant and, um, and a testament to how much uh, she transformed because before that, nobody would have listened to her. So that was actually really sweet to hear her process through and then ultimately decide that mm -hmm. um, she wanted to surrender her life to Jesus. And so we are uh, praising that. So if you could be praying for her as she continues to grow in her faith as we start to disciple her, uh, really, and just show her what it looks like to follow Jesus, um, that she would stick with that stick with it, um, that she would, um, continue to seek after Jesus. Um, and then also for Kristen. And so Kristen is the other girl who we read the Bible with. Um, and she still has not decided to follow Jesus. Um, but she was there when Peyton decided to follow Jesus. So hoping to have more conversations with her. So if you could just be praying for the Lord to soften Kristen's heart and for the Lord to reveal himself to her. We are really looking forward to what this looks like. Both of these girls are freshmen and have a lot of other freshman friends. And so um, could just be an incredible end to us meeting more students mm -hmm. and uh, getting to share the gospel and disciple more students. So we are really excited about that. If you could be praying for that. Yeah, so excited about Peyton and Kristen, I, I think Kristen's going to get saved soon, so mm -hmm. please, yeah, keep praying for Kristen's salvation. That particularly is an exciting thing for us because this first season of Landing in Fort Collins has been all about getting settled, about our core team really looking in and saying, hey, how do we love one another well? How do we um, take care of one another, bear one another's burdens, uh, so that when we really hit the ground running in the fall with the new school year, um, we'll have our togetherness and our community kind of set there to really start looking outwardly towards the campus. Uh, but we want to see God move and we want to see people get saved. And so we, uh, even in previous uh, videos to you guys, have shared some of what we're learning about prayer and that being a focus for our team in this first mm -hmm. season. And so I just think even Peyton's salvation is such a, beyond what it is just in and of itself, is an exciting thing for our team because we've been praying mm -hmm. for Peyton a lot. And we we, oh, we hope you guys out there have been praying for Peyton, but we've been praying for her often, weekly, mm -hmm. daily, um, multiple people, the people that live in Fort Collins already and the people that don't. And so I just think it's it's adding to the conviction we've had and the, the desire we've had to just say, man, the work, the work is prayer. The work mm -hmm. is getting on our knees and, and asking the Lord to move uh, in people's hearts. We just don't have jurisdiction there. And so mm -hmm. 
that's been that's been encouraging. Uh, we've been continuing the book of Ephesians as a church, uh, and that's really great. We'll be starting after uh, Easter this Sunday. Obviously, it's Holy Week, so happy Holy Week out there. But after that, we'll be just starting Ephesians chapter 4. So we're probably, oh, like 14, 13 or 14 sermons into the book of Ephesians mm-hmm. Sundays that we've been there studying the first three chapters. And uh, it's been really great. It's been really encouraging seeing growth and people seeing, mm-hmm. I think, just some taking hold of those truths. Uh, And I think we're excited for this moment where Paul pivots to, uh, I, I, Paul, prisoner on behalf of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you've been called. And so now he's making that shift to, uh, from indicative to imperative. It's time to start living into it. So we're excited about that as a church. Um, We also had our core team. So we've explained this before, but I think there's... uh, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of us in Fort Collins currently Mm -hmm. of a team of, I believe, 16. And so nine of our core team members don't yet live in the city and they will anywhere between the next month and a half to three months is when they'll all be moving in. But we we have been really focusing on uh, getting close as a team. We are coming from multiple different sites of the Resonate Church Network, which is not... Um, I think our team is probably in that sense more diverse than any of our teams in the past coming Mm -hmm. from multiple sites. Um, and so we don't all know each other extremely well. We've been working on that quite a bit. We have a weekly Thursday night core team call for an hour and a half where we process through things together and we talk right now we're reading life together by Bonhoeffer, which has been really good. Um, we also call, we have like a rotating schedule of you call, uh, two other people. So three of you on a call each week and share your testimony with them. We've been doing that for probably like 10 weeks now or something. Mm -hmm. So that's part of our rhythms currently together. Um, And then another important thing we wanted to prioritize was actually getting people here into the city for, we had a weekend overlap between spring breaks. Some people's spring breaks were one week, some people's were the next week, but that weekend in between overlapped. We uh, put some funds in, we prioritized getting people into the city. And so we had our whole team minus one strep throat out there uh, in, in Fort Collins with us. Man, was that special. Mm-hmm. That was so special to have some of the team who had never been to Fort Collins, who have committed to the team without having personally seen it, get to mm-hmm. come here, get to walk around the city, get to be on campus, get to see the houses they've already signed leases mm-hmm. for. Um, that they hadn't yet seen. And so it was just, it was so good to, it felt like the glue that brings together the calls, the digital spaces mm-hmm. we've been engaging in. Um, we had a two hour worship night and one of the the guys on the team was just like, man, I can't believe, like he thought it was way less. That was like half an hour. And I was like, that was two hours, my guy. <laughs> and, and it was just so clear that the Lord was moving in people's hearts and someone mm-hmm. else saying, man, this is just a well of like life for me. And we get to be here and worship together. So that was just the experience with our team together. We'll we'll share a picture uh, in this e- that e- this email that the video comes in of the team and some time from that weekend. Uh, but that was really special. So yeah, just keep praying for the team. Keep praying for togetherness there. I think there's still um, four of those nine people who have yet to move here that need to get houses still like sign leases and stuff. Mm-hmm. So you can be praying for that, but also praise God that a couple of them have, I think five of them have their housing set yeah. already, which is really encouraging. So we're most of the way there. And and then there's job stuff going on. Most of them mm-hmm. are starting to look for jobs. Someone's trying to get into a, a dish, a work for a dish with another one of our um, core team members who's already here. Someone else is trying to get into a climbing wall. Some people are trying to make sure that there's their job says it can be remote, actually can transfer over. And so there's just a, there's jobs up there. That's definitely a prayer request for our team that will be uh, necessary in the next couple months uh, for sure. And then, there, oh, MPD. Yeah, well, I guess the last thing I want to sh- we want to share with you guys is the Lord has been just really good to us in terms of financial provision mm-hmm. uh, over the last, man, really quite a while, but just this last season, even taking care of some things. I don't know if we shared this on a call, but when we first moved here, probably a month in, Krista actually had a seizure um, for the first, a first time seizure. And so that like there was medical bills attached with that and things like that. And the Lord has just moved in a lot of ways to provide Mm -hmm. for our needs, which has been really 
um, encouraging. He's he's been doing that for our team. It seems like as a whole, another yeah. another a group of people on our on our core team got into a car accident two months ago, and kind of seemed like the worst. But then it ended up the way the insurance claim worked out and the timing of it ended up being just like perfect financial provision above and beyond what they needed to both take care of bills, but also uh, get a new car as well. So it's just kind of crazy to see like, wow, that was like two months like upstream (laughs) that car accident was providing two months later that we didn't see or know and so just been some really cool things that way Uh, Kristen and I specifically are praying towards and working towards raising um, about three thousand dollars in monthly monthly financial partnership in the next 13 months so that's a lot of calls. That's a lot of connections. That's a lot of work there, which has been really sweet. And it's been a blessing for us. And so just, we had some calls even this last week. We were so encouraging to talk to the, the people and uh, them saying yes. And even while we were on the the phone with someone, we were asking if they would consider being a prayer and financial ministry partner, a current ministry partner uh, out there. And you, you know who you are, you know, texted <laughs> and said, Hey, just, uh, I want to up my gift. Just things like that that have been like, and I've had other people just reach out like just out of the blue. And so it's just been cool to see God provide um, and meet needs and future needs and and whatnot. And so it's just been really, really good. Um, And it's going to allow for Krista to be so much more present and not have to have a full-time position Mm -hmm. next year that she'll be able to be present with the church um, and discipling those girls and getting on campus and continuing to disciple the girls like Peyton and Kristen that she's, currently reading the bible with so Mm -hmm. we're just blown away and uh we're praying for praying for god to provide that's that's gonna be a thing for the next uh, our goal is to raise that three thousand monthly in the next 13 months so you can Mm -hmm. be praying for uh for that and that the lord would meet those needs and have the uh the income that we can both have some saving and for a house in the future but also kind of a one family income sort of Mm -hmm. situation and those things so uh, I think that's really all that we have to update you guys on as of this moment. Um, we're thankful for you. We appreciate yeah. you. You guys are part of the work. Um, I don't know if we've said this explicitly in past videos and updates, but like you guys are always welcome here. You invest in this ministry. And if there's just ever a time you're like, man, we have a week and we want to go see Fort Collins, let us mm-hmm. know. We want to, we have a guest room. Like we want to house you guys. We want to, we want you guys to come be part and see what it is you're investing in. We've been thankful for the, the mission partners that have been able to make it uh, up here and see us so mm-hmm. far. So there's people here that don't know you guys they don't know your names, but uh, they don't know the benefit of having your, your prayers and even your finances invest in their lives, but we're thankful for it. And yeah. we're thankful for you guys. So. Yeah. Yeah. We love you guys a lot. And we are so appreciative of, your prayers of your support and of everything. So thank you for being a part of our lives. We love you a lot. Okay. We'll talk to you guys later. See ya. Bye.